I'd like to call this meeting to order for the regular session of the Blackhawk County Board of Supervisors for August 8, 2023. Roll call, please, Mr. Veter. Hall. Here. Little. Here. Schwartz. Here. Jelka. Here. Leland. Here. Would everyone please join us for a moment of silence to reflect on our actions today? Thank you. Would you please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item one is the agenda received as proposed or amended. So moved. Second. And moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The agenda is received. Item two is public comments. Is there anyone in the audience today that would like to speak on something that is not on today's agenda? Is there anyone on Zoom? Seeing none, we'll move on to claims and payments. This is a resolution that the Board of Supervisors approve expenditures and that the <laughs> county auditor be authorized and directed to issue checks against the various settlement of such claims as allowed. So moved. Second. And moved and seconded. Leading. Good morning, board. Our total bill payments today are $391,377.81. And the 6040 fund, we are paying a large amount this time, $40,045.50. And that includes six months payment for um, one of the staff Oh, I can't remember Geiger and I can't tell you I can't remember where she's yeah. from now yeah. Department yeah. of Correctional Services yeah yes um not too many large payments this time we are purchasing one van for the sheriff's office and paying for one drum mulcher mower other than that everything looks routine and appears to be in order unless you have any questions Hearing none, well, please answer as your name is called. Hall? Yes. Little? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Jelka? Yes. Leland? Yes. Item four, receive project updates from department heads and elected officials. Good morning, board. Kathy Nicholas, county engineer. Uh, just a brief update on the roads this morning. Our uh, bridge crew is out working on Union Road this morning. Uh, this is just north of the city of Cedar Falls city limits. Uh, we have two structures as you go through the curves uh, going to the north out of Cedar Falls and we are doing some patching on uh, the bridge deck on the south bridge. Uh, we have the road closed to one lane and this we anticipate this going on for several mornings this week. We're using a, a new rapid set product to patch some of those holes on that bridge deck. The gravel roads are in fairly rough shape throughout the county right now because it's been so dry and we haven't been able to be out there. Now that we got some moisture over the weekend, the, the blade operators are out there on the gravel road system. Uh, if we continue to get a bit more moisture in the coming weeks, the, the condition of the gravel roads will improve. And then finally, Pointer Road, if we are coming into the home stretch on that bridge. The, the uh, contractor has about 10 to 12 more working days left. It seems they will probably take all of the working days, so we anticipate that being complete within a couple of weeks yet, weather, weather depending. Can I answer any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else in the room to, for an update? Anyone online for an update? Seeing none, we'll move on to the minutes approved for August 1st, 2023. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Minutes are approved. Item six, consent agenda. The following items are acted upon by a single resolution without separate discussion unless someone from the board requests it. So moved. Second. And moved and seconded. <clears throat> There's nothing to be removed. Please answer as your name is called. Little. Yes. Schwartz. Yes. Velka. Yes. Hall. Yes. Leland? Yes. 
Item 7, Contracts and Agreements. Resolution that the contract between Blackhawk County and Permar Security Services, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, for security services for the courthouse and Pinecrest facilities with a bid of the court for the courthouse at a cost of $427,748.75 and Pinecrest building at a cost of $142,542.40 for a three-year term be awarded and direct the chair to sign for same as recommended by Rory Geving, facilities director. So moved. Second. Are there any questions for Rory? And please answer as your name is called. Schwartz? Yes. Belka? Yes. Hall? Yes. Little? Yes. Leyland? Yes. Item B, resolution that the best bid received from NeoGov to for applicant tracking sorry, and onboarding system software with an implementation and training support cost of $5,000 and annual subscription rate of $10,087 for year one, $15,310.50 for year two, and $20,174 for year three as recommended by Amanda Fezenmeyer, HR director. So moved. Second. And moved and seconded. Are there any questions or is there anything you'd like to say, Amanda, about this? Uh, just that uh, this was uh, brought to Al and I's attention um, last winter that our current uh, applicant tracking system, Civic HR, would be sunsetting and was purchased by Criterion. Um, and so we had the option then to look at a couple different alternatives for applicant tracking. NeoGov is definitely a leader in public sector and um, they're very similar bids. Um, I think the total difference of the three years is about $400, but with the integration to our payroll system is what really kind of elevated um, our interest administratively when it comes to posting jobs and also onboarding um, applicants into new hires, but then also uh, the recruiting platform being tied directly with an RSS feed to governmentjobs.com uh, indeed to really kind of enhance our uh, presence on some of these key areas where candidates are looking to join public sector roles, so. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. If there are no questions for Amanda, Please answer as your name is called. Trelka? Yes. Hall? Yes. Little? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Leyland? Yes. Thank you. Item C, resolution that the agreement between Blackhawk County and JJR Investments LLC, owned by JJR Investments LLC, situated at 829 Sycamore Street, Waterloo, Iowa, for the sum of $325,000, and that it be recorded with the county recorder approved and direct the chair to sign for same as recommended by Rory Giving, facilities director. So moved. Second. And moved and seconded. <coughs> Mr. Giving, you have some comments? Uh, yes, uh, good morning board, good morning. Rory Giving, <coughs> facilities director. Uh, this request is the purchase of, uh, be the former uh, Raymount towing facility, which <coughs> is uh, connected to our juvenile court services uh, facility. Um, it is uh, just shy of 1,100 or 11,000 square feet. Um, this uh, facility, uh, future use would be to house uh, critical equipment uh, that the county uses, uh, primarily snow removal equipment, uh, vehicles and such. Um, so yeah, we are uh, excited to uh, get uh, some of these investments that the county has made indoors uh, to, with the hopes to uh, preserving its uh, life and extending that so uh, if there's any other questions uh, thank you very much no. any questions no. No. all right please I, answer as your name is called Madam Chair. oh yes i have a question it sounded like you said something about uh recording with the county recorder i don't and i think that was a misprint i think that was not supposed to be included oh okay so it should have just ended with the sum of three hundred and twenty-five thousand and that We'd be, it'd be approved and direct the chair to sign okay. the agreement. So thank you for catching right. that. Thank you. All right. Uh, Hall? Yes. Little? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Galka? Yes. Leyland? Yes. Moving on to other business. This is a resolution to approve the 28E agreement between Blackhawk County and the City of Cedar Falls, defining the cooperation between the county and the city for the upcoming road reconstruction of Viking Road be approved as recommended by Catherine Nicholas, County Engineer. So moved. Second. And moved and seconded, Kathy. Yeah, just uh, to refresh your memories, uh, this is the portion of Viking Road in Cedar Falls in the 6,000 block over to South Union Road. 
and uh, Cedar Falls wants to improve it. And I've been placing this in our, our five-year plan for the last few years. We agreed to, or we figured that we could participate up to the cost of what we would spend if we were repaving a county road. So at that time, we figured 225000 uh, As we know, costs have gone up. The new project cost for Cedar Falls is $7.6 million. We agreed that, uh, well, they asked if we could contribute 350000 We thought that that was reasonable. They, they have since included a culvert that we weren't anticipating replacing the first time. So this year we have budgeted in our FY23 budget, we have budgeted 325000 excuse me, our FY24 budget. And then FY25, we will budget the remainder 25000 to give them $350,000, if you agree. Are there any questions for Kathy? Any more questions? Mm -hmm. Any questions, I guess. She gave us the information. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. If not, please answer as your name is called. <coughs> oh, yes. Little? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Falka? Yes. Leyland? Yes. Item B, resolution to approve the Articles of Amendment to Consolidated Public Safety Communications 28E Agreement as approved by the Oversight Board on 28th day of June 2023 by and between Blackhawk County, the City of Waterloo, the City of Cedar Falls, the City of Evansdale, the City of Hudson, the City of LaPorte, the City of Dunkerton, and the City of Gilbertville. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded, and I think everybody from discussion points familiar with the action that we all took, and it was unanimous of our board at that time. So if there are no further Questions or comments, please answer as your name is called. Little? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Belka? Yes. Hall? Yes. Leyland? Yes. Item C, discussion and possible board action to approve the agreement between Blackhawk County and HKG Solutions for online benefit enrollment software at an annual cost of $21,260 for year one, $17,760 for year two and $17,760 for year three, as recommended by Amanda Fesenmeyer, HR Director, and Prospective Consulting. So moved. Second. Great. Okay, so again, another topic that we discussed during budget time, um, and this is a, it's not something that's currently been budgeted, but we discussed using the self-insurance uh, fund for the health insurance, that's where a lot of our administrative fees come out. Um, but it was uh, brought to us from our consultants, from another client's request um, to basically improve the uh, enrollment of our benefits for uh, employees, their dependents, um, and then also on the back end for processing for human resources and payroll. Um, so this is just an opportunity to explore a more digital system uh, to right now what is very much a manual process done by paper and a lot of communication and checking and verifying. So I um, thought it was a good time because we did change with Wellmark and they have been kind of asking about the status of whether we're going to move forward with an online enrollment or continue a paper process. Uh, what I like about Ease is that um, you can see on the pricing page here, it, in it includes all of our benefits for the file feeds. So instead of us going into you know, six different vendors to enter the same date of birth, social security numbers for one employee and their dependents were able to provide this online platform for the employee to fill it out, put it on a piece of paper, they can do it from their home. Um, oftentimes we have uh, people that have to go home, get the social security numbers and the information. We are typically kind of waiting for that information to come to us. So this is just a more user friendly um, option. And uh, you know, for today, Mike has looked at the agreement. We've had kind of discussions about insurance. They have been agreeable to his modifications. Um, I don't have the final contract today, but um, we are expecting to receive that. Um, and they were agreeable to what he requested to be changed. There is a year one, two, or three option. It's pretty minimal in the chart and the you know fees um, of about $1,000 difference. Um, but if we you know, were to have this approved, we would start with new hires, um, qualifying events like births, marriages, things like that, and then we would set it up for open enrollment in May. And that was what my question. I wondered when you wanted to set it up for what would be the date. So that 
Yeah, Wellmark would like us to, you know, set it up in the, you know, near future or have a decision so that we can move forward um, now that we're kind of through the whole implementation from preferred one to Wellmark. But um, we thought it was a good time um, since we're through across the boards, we're through kind of the hiring frenzy that is July 1. And, um, but, yep. So is it critical or is it important that we approve the agreement now? Or I know you said you could do it any day, but as far as has Mike had a chance to review the agreement or is there anything like that we need to do that we do typically before we would go ahead and approve it? I don't believe so. I think he's had a chance to review and provide okay. feedback. The only thing would be if they disagreed, but from Stacy was up here yesterday for our annual benefit <coughs> review. She said that they were agreeable to any of the feedback and yeah, assuming what they come back with is exactly what we requested, then I would consider it reviewed. I'll, I'll obviously take a look at it when we get it back. So would we like to make that motion for approving the agreement subject to review or contingent on review of that, or what would be best, seem, or or just wait? We've got a motion. Amanda, you, you think it's going to be here within a week or so, or don't you really know? Um, it shouldn't be too long, no. Um, I just provided all the changes Friday. We had so kind of gave my good name yeah, okay. it's, or window, uh, but um, it we, should be back to us here soon. I, I would expect is it there, back soon. Is there a problem if we just table it for a week? No, I mean, it, that's fine. Either way. Yeah, is there is a motion on the floor, but like you said, as far as the... I would, if it would be all right, though, if we knew for it is... Could we do a three-year agreement or at least a two-year agreement? Um, I kind of wanted just some direction on that for the contract. Um, usually we do three-year agreements, but. Um, and it sounded like that was probably, I mean, that that makes sense to do it that way too for our benefit. And like I said, it's out of the funding and that benefits our employees. So I think it's great change. So. Three, I don't know, is three years. Is there any discussion among the board to do differently or three? Go with three, three. Like three. Yeah, I would just do three years and just, well, I'm fine approving it today, just pending final review. I think we're. And could you come back to us in a week, I guess, just yeah. to kind of give us that update? Because I think, update. yeah, as yep. Tom's mentioned before, sometimes we say that we're going to do that and don't get reminded of it, follow up on it. So that'd be great. Yep. I'll be back next week just to give an update. So. All right. Thank you. Thank so. you. We'll do resolution votes. That's all right with everyone. And you, hmm? please so answer as your name is called. The resolution is to approve it contingent on or subject to um, Mike's review of the final language. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Schwartz? Yes. Velka? Yes. Hall? Yes. Little? No. Leyland? Yes. Thank you. Moving on to item D, motion to direct the county auditor to advertise for a public hearing to be held at 9.05 on Tuesday, August 22nd at the Blackhawk County Courthouse on the proposed purchase of two single axle dump trucks and one tandem axle dump truck for the Blackhawk County Engineers Department. So moved. Second. Second. That moved and seconded. Kathy, did you want to address that? Yeah, I just wanted to say a few uh, words about this since we are changing the way we're bidding our dump trucks currently. I sent you a lengthy email about some of the changes in um, the way Freightliner is marketing their trucks. There are fewer businesses who are who are able to sell us trucks currently. I don't, we don't know if this will be permanent, but it seems like they are switching to more of a territorial model, similar to what motor graders are. <coughs> we're, we're only seeing one vendor who will sell us trucks at this time. And then we would like to maximize what we can receive from our from a trade-in by by splitting our bids by going to a chassis and a snow equipment separating those those bids so today i'm just asking for a public hearing for three uh, dump truck chassis and then we'll worry about uh, probably in another month i'll come back and ask for the snow plow equipment as a separate bid can i answer any questions Thank you. This is a motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 
Item E, motion that the reappointment of Jerry Hageman as a representative for the county recorder on Blackhawk County Compensation Board be approved effective July 1, 2023. So moved. Second. So moved. Then moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item F, motion that the reappointment of Steve Brusker as a representative for the county sheriff on the Blackhawk County Compensation Board be approved effective July 1, 2023. So moved. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <clears throat> Motion carries. Item G, discussion on the local option sales and services tax referendum anticipated for November 7, 2023. And Grant, you were so good last week to kind of bring us up to date and act to give us more information or. All right. I, you. <coughs> excuse me. I me emailed the board some information yesterday giving a timeline uh, that we seem to be on. Now, I'm afraid I did not see what occurred in the city council meeting last night for the city of Waterloo. I saw they had it on their agenda and I assume they approved to um, initiate the uh, local option tax election for November 7th. And so uh, that puts in train a, a series of events that you're involved with um, by next week, by August 15th, you have a deadline to set that election for November 7th. And that is really the date that, that Waterloo wants it and everybody else wants it. Um, this will um, go into effect uh, when the current tax sunsets at the end of uh, 2025 and so it seems like we're uh, well in advance of um, getting this done in a timely manner uh, but I think it, it just makes everybody more comfortable uh, getting it done in plenty of time especially if they're in any cases where it would fail there would be time to bring the referendum back uh, but regardless of the uh, motives for for that timing that's kind of what's been used the last few um, elections that uh, the option tax has been held on. So the board then, after setting that date of the election, then the board has to make its decision about how it wishes to use the funding. And uh, I, I sent you a little history of uh, how the county has used its portion of the, of the option tax since its inception. We started out by using it 100% for property tax relief. Um, somewhere along the line, it was modified slightly to say that it was uh, for property tax relief um, in the rural fund for the unincorporated area. That's where you are levying the taxes, just in the, the unincorporated area of the county. And so uh, it, was, it was worded so that it would be reducing the uh, the rural fund to zero if possible and we did have a zero fund uh, a zero tax levy in the rural fund uh, for a number of years then it was changed uh, it was in the midst of one of the five year periods when it was sunsetting after five years that the board decided to split that between property tax relief and roads and bridges and so that was approved I think in 2008 and then when it came up when it did sunset it came up again uh, 2010 then uh, it remained that and then in uh, 2015 uh, it was changed to um, sunset for 10 years after 10 years rather than the five years that had been used before it is under the law the board's prerogative how long if there's going to be a sunset, how long that will be for the whole county, not just for the unincorporated areas, but for the cities as well. And I think that the board has kind of tried to act in concert with the wishes of the communities in that regard in the past, <coughs> uh, but, it, but it's ultimately your decision. You do not have to have a sunset. Uh, there are many counties and cities that do not have sunsets. Uh, but if you're going to be in um, consonance with 
you know, past actions that, you know, you, you would have a sunset. So um, another couple of little details that I may not have mentioned before. Um, it's important to understand that uh, there's a, a quirk of this law where it says that if you have contiguous cities, they all vote as a unit. They have their own different uses of the tax, but they vote as a unit as to whether it is approved or not. So um, Cedar Falls, Waterloo, Hudson, Evansdale, Elk Run Heights, Raymond uh, are all contiguous. And therefore, it's the total vote of those cities that determines whether the tax is approved for those cities or not. So for instance, uh, you know, Cedar Falls could vote it down, but if the rest of the cities voted up, then Cedar Falls is going to continue to have the tax. The unincorporated area is voted separately. The other non-contiguous cities like Dunkerton, Laporte City, um, Gilbertville, uh, they vote separately and decide uh, their own uh, fate by themselves. Um, another little note is uh, we have two cities, Jessup and Janesville, which are partly in Black Hawk and partly in other counties. And they took action a number of years ago <coughs> so that uh, they do not have a sunset uh, like the rest of the counties that they are primarily in. And so uh, this election will not be held in our portion of Jessup or Janesville, uh, just the rest of the county. So, is that because uh, they hold theirs in their a larger portion <laughs> because of the other the county that they well, belong to? They, uh, <laughs> it's uh, stretching my my memory a little to uh, remember exactly how that worked before, but um, they had to hold separate elections for the the Bremer and Buchanan portions of their cities than the portions for the Black Hawk until they took special action to put them put themselves into uh, you know one unit and i'm sorry i i don't want to try to remember details of that that i'm not real sure about that's okay i was just curious that they they have it and take advantage of it somewhat i assume but just yes handled differently then so, okay i have some questions uh <laughs> The first question I had, or first thought I had, was uh, I'm leaning toward, I don't think we need a sunset. I would support not having a sunset and just making it permanent, per se. And I can't remember how much money we're talking annually. Michelle, how much does it generate? Approximately three and a half to 3.8 million, something like that, annually. And then 50% goes for secondary roads. I think it's useful. I like it. Uh, we have challenges with funding dispatch. How do we, I mean, one thought I have, and these it, budgets get so complicated because they're large, so many dynamics, there are autonomous boards involved. <laughs> there are lack of oversight boards. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, we have, I think we've, Obviously, we have to get this on the agenda for next week. Mm -hmm. And of course, I, I support it. And I, I also support not having a sunset clause in there. I'm, I'm kind of inclined to, to not have a sunset clause in there, too. I'd want to hear you know, from the other city, some of the city leaders, you know, yeah. um, in this week. And I'll, I'll certainly reach out because um, they've, they've got a lot of skin in the scheme, too. Um, but I mean, it seems it's, it's been a good use of the funds uh -huh. um, so far, and so it's. And we can have an election anytime, is that correct, Grant? As far as whether you set the sunset or you don't, as far, I, when you say some have set a sunset of 10 years and now we're having this early. Yes, if you want to change the use of the tax, uh, you can hold an election just to change that without changing the sunset. And if there is, is there a mechanism, if there's no sunset that that the voters themselves can petition to call for an election? To, uh, to force a sunset, yes. Yeah. Okay. 
Has, was there any opposition or does anyone recall as far as when we set that? You said earlier on, I know we talked about it being a five-year term and then it was elongated to the 10. Do we, was there any public input that anybody remembers, I guess, that did or didn't like it, I guess? No, I, I don't remember um, uh, a lot of discourse about it. Um, I have records of the votes that uh, I can share with you that, um, you know, it, it continued to pass. Um, there, um, sorry, there was something else I wanted to mention. Oh, um, Dan, when you talked about um, the, the possible uses of the funds for uh, reducing uh, you know, property taxes, um, it's important to note that we have for many years used this the property tax reduction uh, in the rural fund exclusively. We started out, it was in the general fund, but it was switched to the rural fund. That's, uh, you know, definitely your call when you say property tax relief. Um, that can be the general fund, the rural fund, or wherever you have property taxes levied. But it has been um, the tradition for uh, many years to do it exclusively in the rural fund. And I assume that's because it is where we're drawing, like say, the funding so from our unincorporated area, correct? Uh, yeah, I think our that's that's the, the main uh, reasoning for it. Um, but, you know, everybody pays county taxes, everybody in the county pays county taxes, and, um, well, I don't know. That's Yes, the, but I the reason the for, for, it, yeah. for it is that it's levied in the unincorporated area. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm intrigued to go ahead. maybe do a little digging and research, too, on what other counties um, are they using those dollars. Um, I, did, I did ask about a little bit this morning, and, and I know I didn't give him probably a fair chance to even con to, to consider it, but I said if there are different allocations, you know, the 20% or I said 95% versus five, all kinds of things you could do and not knowing what other counties do with it. And he said you can as far as the allocation is up to you, but. Yeah, I think we can probably find online with the Department of Revenue or Management um, a listing of how all the counties and cities use their local option tax. I'd be curious. To, uh, oh, sorry. No. no. I'd, I'd be curious to hear um, maybe from Kathy a little bit about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we got to a point this year that we were starting to fund <laughs> projects, larger projects without bonding, um, which is nice. The interest that saved. So I just wonder um, if more of this was going into roads. Um, are there? Um, just how much would we increase that capacity for taking on more projects without having to do it with debt? Or, or what a wonderful question! It looks like she's yes. yeah. I, I just, I just Sir, put I wasn't together. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> I put together a few slides for you, and I, I will provide you with any information you ask for. But I did want to just again express how huge the impact is on our road system. Uh, like Michelle said, this is data from Michelle. The, the county receives uh, like $3.75 million annually from the local option sales tax. Half of that goes to to be used for roads and bridges. Traditionally, it had been placed in a, a debt service fund. So in the last uh, 15 years, the last 13 to 15 years, we've been able to pave uh, over 50 miles of pavement. Yes, we would have. I would say that's been an additional 50, excuse me, 80 miles of roadways, over $50 million that we've gotten from the use of local option sales tax, over $50 million in the last 15 years. So we've resurfaced over, um, I think it's between 80 and 90 miles that we probably wouldn't have done otherwise. That also includes uh, replacing a few bridges, but mostly we spent the money on, on road projects because they were shovel ready. We could get these projects done quickly and out the door. I also will say that those pavements are aging. Uh, right now we have a really good road system and bridge system. Most of our, a good portion of our roads are in uh, excellent to good condition right now. In the next five to 10 years, we're going to see those pavements that we've resurfaced in the last 
uh, five to ten years. They will, of course, get older in their life. Our asphalt pavements last 20 to 22 years. Uh, they experience uh, aging. Our, our environment is worse on our roadways, of course, for our county roads than the traffic is. So they're going to age, and that, that will require some maintenance to be done on those, those roads. Uh, right now, we are in good condition because of all the bond money we've spent. And looking at our bridges, we're also in pretty good condition right now with our bridges. This is just a, a slide I've showed you when I give you our five-year plan. Uh, we have 139 bridges in good condition. Uh, I would strongly encourage you to, to uh, continue on with the 50% of the local option sales tax going to roads and bridges. We are seeing a large increases in bridge construction costs as well as road construction costs. Um, they are tra tracking very similarly over the last 10 years. We're both seeing about a 30% increase. This uh, slide shows 30% increase in slab bridge construction, which is primarily what we're building on the county road system, our slab bridges. 28% uh, increase in construction costs in the last 10 years. And then roadway costs have also increased about 28% as well. Our equipment costs have gone up uh, just really quite a bit in the last few years, of course, due to COVID. You, you know about some of those issues as well as I do. The supply chain issues, uh, equipment costs, motor grader costs have gone up by 45% in the last uh, 10 years. Truck costs have gone up 14%. And then another really large cost that we don't often think about is our aggregate costs. The amount of rock we're placing on the gravel roads. We, we still like to place uh, 10 miles, 10 to 20 miles every year. Our aim is to do 20 miles in every greater district. We have nine greater districts. That's 180 miles of rock that we are placing every year just to re-rock to maintain the road system. Our costs to do that have gone up $200,000 in the last 10 years. So that's about a 41% increase. And that's just for our gravel road system. So. These are good reasons to go with a 50% increase, excuse me, continue that 50% to the roads and bridge system with a local option sales tax. So please continue to support it. In time, we will, be, we will be needing to resurface, rehabilitate those roads that we have spent quite a bit of money on in the last five to 10 years. You can also consider yeah. increasing it to 60%. Yes, go ahead, Tom. Uh, the board requested at the time, uh, seeing that we did have some minor opposition when we first implemented that years ago, uh, the board requested that any road projects that was funded through this uh, local option sales tax, that you would put up a sign stating so, so they could see that their money was working. Are we still doing that? We have not done that in the last few years after about five years ago, we stopped with the bond program, so we stopped putting those signs up. Granny Road, admittedly, we could have put a sign out there for that, but we, I'm sorry, we didn't put those signs out. But we had been up until about five or six years ago. So you mentioned the additional 10% would give you about 375000 I'm sorry, that should be half of that. That would be about $1.8 million, or one point. Eight thousand, one hundred eighty thousand dollars more. The ten percent more would be that that three seventy five was looking at all of the local option sales tax. I'm sorry, that's oh, a typo. Total being sixty percent total. Would yeah. Be, okay. Gotcha. So half of that would give us ten percent more. Sure, we could buy uh, another truck. We could buy a part, you know, a portion of a motor grader. We could do preventative maintenance. There are many uses that we could spend an additional 10% of funding on. Okay. So we've got until the end of the month at least to consider. Next week we have to set the date for the election for November 7th. Uh, we have till the end of the month to determine sunset versus not or and the other what other counties are doing looking at that mm -hmm. probably in the next week here or so as well as, I guess, if we were to change the allocation or wanted to or saw benefit in it. I'd, I'd like to give some consideration to the 60% because I think, you know, it's a, it's a point of pride that you can 
um, be driving around on, on our roads and without even looking at a sign, you can tell whether you've left Black Hawk County or, or entered it because the roads are better here um, significantly. And there's been so much work that was done um, over the years to really kind of turn that situation around. And now we've got all these roads and they're going to be aging, as, as Kathy said, um, and the cost to maintain those is going to be more. So I think I'm going to be thinking about that 10% this week for sure, that 10% increase potentially. And maybe Michelle, if you could just prepare something that demonstrates over the last, let's say 10 years, how much has that, how much has this fund increased every year that, that because to hear costs are going up, yes, but I think there's also the revenues are going yeah, up. Yeah. Um, because of just the nature of, of sales tax. I think I started with 2008, but I think the revenues okay. nearly doubled since okay. 2008. Um, and then we also aren't having to pay interest any longer. So we are able to devote more to actual construction for the roads. Um, and I put a few points on the handout I had about if you choose to increase the local option tax for roads, what we might need to do to make up for that because we're using all the 50% that's allocated to the rural fund to reduce those taxes. So we would either have to reduce expenses, which, and there aren't very many in the rural fund. It's uniform patrol, basic is the big one other than roads. Um, and then just a few other small things and dispatch being one of those things that is where we pay our share of that too um, so those those are the things that we'd have to think about you could we do have a little bit of room under the the rural levy cap so you could raise that slightly and i didn't calculate the dollars i should have done that um, or you could shift things back to the basic levy and increase that levy but it would likely it, it would likely mean either increasing levies or reducing expenses somehow because we do allocate the full pot. Well, and I know um, you touched on too just recently because one of my questions was we say it's property tax relief or reduction of that. And I asked Grant, I know, like, what does that mean we do with it? I mean, what happens to that funding? And obviously, the roads and bridges is very obvious that we spend it for that. But how do we reduce property tax? Because we, fund, this portion. because we fund, um, I think it's about 1.3 million. I'll have to check that, but mm -hmm. that's how we pay for the rural deputies from the sheriff's office. And so if we didn't, we'd have to tax for it. Mm -hmm. That would be an option. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That'd be an reduce option. Tax, you, reduce costs or, yeah. Reduce costs or increase the tax yeah. levy to yeah. continue funding. The sheriff's office and dispatch that's also where we pay for the rural libraries um well i shouldn't say just rural libraries the library allocation um we do fund our county planning and zoning out of here so i've included it in that expense chart i gave you but that actually pays for itself roughly so it, there isn't a tax levy on that um, we pay for our emergency management allocation out of there um and that's that's about it. Is it, is it possible, um, I don't know if we have easy access to data, but can I show the hot spots of where um, collections are kind of the highest in these, in these parts they, and give a better sense? They really sense? don't allocate this way. The, it's interesting how local option tax is calculated. It's based partly on population and partly on property values from a year. <laughs> A long time ago when it began mm -hmm. so it's um, it's a really the calculation doesn't have a whole lot to do with how okay it works. all right because we can't we can't just look at it and say like okay the folks in Washburn are generating a lot of property or a lot of sales tax at mm -hmm. this place here okay no so it's getting allocated to our rural based on our rural population I think that's how we get our amount but it's also based on property value and it's a countywide so even even looking at the cities of Waterloo and Cedar Falls, it isn't Waterloo doesn't collect the tax based on things paid for in Waterloo only. They get a share of it countywide based on their property value as a proportion of total county property value and their population. So it's okay. 
I wondered how that works. Yeah, it's I, I couldn't believe it when I finally <laughs> figured that out a few years ago. It's I'm complicated. <laughs> It's worse than that, actually. Yeah, it is. I know. I'm simplifying a little. <laughs> we're looking behind the curtain and we're seeing how sausage is made or something. It's ugly. <laughs> well, that's supposed to be enlightening somehow. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the questions I said and I saw in there, it was interesting with one, the election back in 91, or I think Grant had talked about too, where it, the first one had failed in the unincorporated areas. And um, it was like six months later. Then they had it again and approved it. So when, it, just in case there was a failure, like you said, the timing of this one has a lot or something like that. But it, um, is there a time limit they have to wait between, like if something measure failed and then we would want to do it again or if other communities wanted to do it again? There is not. And that's something that I checked into specifically a couple of months ago and, and made sure with the Secretary of State's office um, there could be another election in you know a month or so. Well. Okay. I shouldn't say that. There, there are all the deadlines that have to be gone through, just like the ones we did for this. But um, it's, there are some uh, referendums under the law that you have to wait like six months if, if it fails before you bring it again. But that's not the case with this. Okay. Well, I just thought that's important because sometimes it's a educational program you kind of need to run sometimes so that the public is no aware of what you're doing if something fails. And apparently, like in that case. They did all agree or saw the benefit of it shortly after that <laughs> that election and, and then held one. So that's good. Thank you. So is there anything anyone else has to say or would like to ask or I like the, thanks for the information from everyone. I said Kathy yours as well. I didn't know what you were presenting, but helpful. I, I will uh, provide language for next week's agenda Put it on. Sure. for uh, setting the 7th, date. You said. And then um, when you get an idea of how you want it worded, I'll, I'll get you language for the end of the month. Okay. Because I assume, or you assume, we all assume that Waterloo passed theirs last night. And that was one question I had last week, was if Waterloo didn't pass it, then we wouldn't have this at all. We wouldn't be That's doing right. it at all. We'd be running it out. That's right. Um, and I don't know if anybody here can tell us it. Yes, it did. Did it? Right. Was it Thank unanimous? Much. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I, it's always nice when it's that. But yeah, I was going to say did they, okay. I didn't hear them say the formula they passed. Uh, 20% in property tax. So they did make that change. Roads? <laughs> and it had been, is it, had there's been 50 50? It was. It had been 100 for roads and, okay, so that was the change. It wasn't as large as I thought it might be. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions, comments for anybody? So, so by next week, we just have to have the resolution of setting the date. Yeah. And then by the end of the month, we need to have agreement on sunset and no yeah. sunset and stuff. Okay. Yeah. So we've got probably a couple weeks for that, but we can okay. put it on either week. One, one more yep. fairly academic point. You can also change the amount. It doesn't have to be 1%. Um, I think that's a kind of a given, uh, but that is something that you have to have on the ballot, how much it will be. But it's always been 1%. <laughs> so we can I, increase I think, it or decrease I think the 1% is a maximum. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's oh, it could be decreased but not increased? Oh, okay. <laughs> Good to know. Nice. <laughs> set ourselves up for failure right yeah. away. <laughs> okay. Glenda, I yes. believe. If I recall the first time that I was involved in it would have been in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, I believe the board was going to change it for uh, not only tax relief, but also for road use. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the arguments we had from the rural area, why were they, why did they have to pay for the rural roads when the urban people, including every board member, drives on the gravel roads? So they felt they were being kind of singled out a little bit of paying an extra tax so that was one problem uh, or concern that they had uh, because we were going to go to the 50 50 formula or change it eventually um, so i know that was an argument that because i believe somebody said michelle or grant said that it's a close exclusive tax for rural only only the sales tax 
Yes, the the uh, property tax relief was yeah. specifically for the rural fund. Yeah. So I think the way we sold it was we're still going to keep X amount for property relief, and we're going to help fix the roads up. And the board had the uh, uh, basically just said, hey, if you don't pass it, uh, a lot of your roads aren't going to get fixed because of the shortage of monies and so forth. So. I believe that was one of the reasons why it did pass, but it there was some grumblings on it uh, from the rural people, and I and I can understand that. Sure, we don't all agree <laughs> most of the time, right? Yeah. Well, thank you, Tom. I was going to say a, a reason. Go ahead, Kathy. I was going to say a reason I'm to sorry, consider I a larger I percentage. Need as well. to make a comment on that. Mm -hmm. The heavy loads are where are taking place on the rural roads, especially now with the, the past legislature from the last few years ago with enacting the all systems permit, allowing those loads to go the now the legal loads with the all systems permit to go up to 12 and a half percent, which was the harvest proclamation that is now permanent. If farmers, mainly this was for farmers, if they get an all systems permit, they can go up to 92,000 pounds now. They are the ones who are driving the heavy loads out on the county roads. We are having to rewrite many of our bridges because of this legislation that was being pushed by the farmers. So they are the ones, um, they are seeing a benefit for, for sure by us uh, resurfacing and rebuilding our, our bridges. Yeah, yeah, appreciate pointing that out because like I said, that's just changed recently and like in the last year. All right. Yeah, that is, thank you. Well, lots to consider. If there's nothing more to discuss, we'll move on to the discussion, possible board action, American Rescue Plan Act, county projects. Is there anyone that has a question, comment, or needs it to update us on anything? No? Oh, the, only, the only th thing I wanted to mention is I sent an email about this. The ARPA committee uh, is not planning at this point to continue to hold regularly scheduled meetings. We can schedule a meeting anytime one is necessary for some function, but I wanted to make sure that the board was aware of that. I, I did send an email, I believe, uh, end of last week about that. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Mike. Should we continue to lead this on, uh, like I say, weekly, or would we like to just put a possible board action monthly, kind of have an item on monthly, because we can always add it, we know every week. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm okay just putting it on when we, when we, when we know we're ready to have something. Some update. Because um, I know we. Sounds have, good. Okay. Anybody? Any objections to that? Oh. All right. We'll do that then. Thank you. Any reports or information from the board? Hearing none. Is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.